Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Just a uh, little quick look and a little Arvin ready yet. Noblex Sparks, I believe, was the uh, the manufacturing company. Uh, this radio dates back to about 1950. It's a little, uh, well, I don't even think that's Bakelite, probably plastic, uh, modern day plastic. Again, 1950. Uh, this looks like to be the ivory model. Looks like this little 451 TL was made in ivory, willow green, sandalwood, and ebony for the period of time. Uh, really like it though. The uh, dial excussion here is really neat. You got these uh, stars in between the uh, the station markers itself. Again, the uh, really cool uh, brass dial pointer. And on the left hand side, you've got the uh, volume on and off. And uh, I tell you, the uh, the uh, plastic case here is in good shape. Uh, not bad at all. There's a few uh, battle scars, but nothing major. And I think it would just clean up nice and definitely will not be repainting this. Again, this is for a uh, friend of mine. Just kind of dropped it off and uh, left it with me. And we'll take a look here at the underneath side as well. And you can see the uh, model number and everything. Still got the tag on the bottom. <laughs> I always love that. Makes it special there. You can see again a 451 TL. It's got the chassis number RE281. And uh, you can see the component layout there on top of the chassis as well. Again, an All-American uh, 5 is what it appears to be. So um, I think I'll bring this thing up on the Variac. I don't think it's been played. Uh, he said he plugged it in, but it was a while back. and I can't remember, honestly, if he said he got any audio out of it or not. But uh, we'll bring it up slowly on the Variac, looking at the, uh, of course, the AC line voltage, but more importantly, the uh, the current consumption, or looking at the wattage of the radio. Just looking at the specs, it looks like I think this was uh, what to say, 35 watts at 117 volts. So we'll make sure that the uh, the current consumption is extremely uh, low because uh, my guess is it has not been recapped. So let's just see what kind of condition it is and see if we can get any uh, audio out of this before we start uh, opening up the uh, the cabinet here and get the chassis out and see if we can do just a quick repair and clean up on this for uh, a friend of mine. All right, let me get the old uh, power cord here out of the radio. And I've already got the radio turned on. So I'm going to turn it on and turn the volume wide open. And we'll get it plugged in here to the Variac. Flip this on. And again, I'm going to bring this up extremely slow. See if I can brighten this up here just a little bit. All right, there we go. You guys can see the uh, voltage applied. And it's like I'm drawing about 0.14 uh, amps of current and about 7.3 watts. So. Let me just bring this up a little more. My uh, Variax got a little kind of a dead spot in it there, so I have to just get right above the uh, 50 volt range. I'm going to bring this up here just a little above 60 volts AC, and uh, we'll toggle back and forth here. You can see I'm about 7 watts. And again, we're about 62 volts. Right, let's bring it on up a little more. Well, hearing a little popping noise there from the speaker.
Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, there we go. We got actually a little uh, audio. And it shows them going about 0.15 amps and about 11 watts. It would be hard to prove that that wasn't... Uh, that they was done deliberately. And Castle, uh, and I love Castle. And about 74 uh, volts. Listen, if it's a, if it's a million dollars that it means for that. Yes. Yeah, because you know they say there's. dirt under your home. There could be a connection between the wet dirt smell and the allergies that just won't go. Let me go ahead and bring the uh, talk. bring the voltage up a little higher. Like the superhero gold member once said in uh, in uh, the Austin Powers movie, there is no freezing you people. And uh, <laughs> the volume's kept just a little bit of a little racket there in, in the uh, potentiometer that needs to be cleaned out. But, uh, let me get this voltage up just a bit higher. Well, and now you've got the uh, chase uh, shaking up in both the Xfinity series and the truck series, which which I like as well. We're still looking good there on the uh, the current uh, consumption, and uh, of course, uh, uh, referencing here the uh, the wattage itself, knowing that the uh, design of the radio was around uh, 35 uh, watts, I think is what it said, at 117 volts in. So I think I'll uh, almost stop here. And uh, we know the unit's playing, so that's a great indicator. Um, it means the uh, main uh, component of the radio itself, the components are in great shape. Um, so uh, let's pop this thing open and uh, just take a look at the uh, the chassis itself for the first time together, and uh, take a look underneath at the uh, the capacitors, resistors, and just see if this thing has been worked on in the past. All right, let's get this thing opened up here and uh, take a look at it. Well, we got the wrong size uh, nut driver here on. Just a moment, and I'll be right back. Okay, got the uh, quarter inch here. Let's see if we can get these knobs off here without any uh, issues. That one came right off. That's a good sign. This one as well. All right, let's just see if this pulls out. All right, there we have it. Not bad. Let me uh, flip on an additional light here. Hopefully that'll show up just a little bit better, but. Uh, looks uh, pretty clean just a little uh, dust and dirt here on the uh, the top side of the uh, chassis itself so let me turn this over here and uh, not bad underneath you can see some work definitely has been done here um, definitely probably not an original cap these more than likely are here, these wax uh, caps. Uh, you got a mica cap here and the electrolytic. Um, who knows? That's probably been replaced at some point in time. We'll do a little research on that and see if we can tell what uh, age this particular uh, cap is. But uh, you do have a mixture here. There's another uh, wax cap in. All the uh, resistors, just looking at them, appear to be original. 
So um, let me discharge this electrolytic uh, capacitor uh, just to make sure I don't get zapped. Again, we've got the uh, radio unplugged. Again, these chassis on this radio, I'm assuming I got to look at the schematics, probably hot. And um, again, I'm using the Variac and always do that when I'm uh, working. I've got a safety mat and I've got a, a 20 kVA uh, insulating pad under my feet as well. So um, let me uh, discharge this cap and um, we'll go ahead and look at uh, getting some modern day uh, capacitors in here. Uh, we'll take these out one by one, check the uh, resistor values, uh, see if we can't blow some of the dust off the top, top of the chassis here and uh, use a little tuner uh, cleaner in this area and just kind of clean this up without doing much to the uh, the chassis itself. Uh, you can see it just a lot of uh, dirt and dust that it's collected over the years. Other than that, though, this thing looks to be in uh, just tremendous shape for, uh, you know, around 1950 or so. All right, we'll continue this in uh, part two of the uh, video just to keep the uh, video length um, in check. Until then, thanks again for watching.